And for our last speaker, we will have Professor Long presenting space mining and economics. So always remember us when you become rich in space. And please give a round of applause to Professor Lang. Well, OK, thanks for the uh, warm welcome. Economics of space mining, yeah, well, I'm an uh, economist. And I'd like to open, however, with something what is not really economically. I want to go back 80 years into the past. 80 years in the past, my grandparents got married. Well, and what they did, they bought a, a pair of marriage ring, you know, like this here, a pair of marriage ring. And in each marriage ring, you have five grams of gold yeah, and some copper. And, uh, well, at that time, to produce this five grams of gold, uh, this produced around about three to five tons of waste. Yeah, because the grade, you know, the content of gold within the rock is so small you know, that, as a side effect, we have five tons of waste, or we had five tons of waste, three to five tons. Later on, yeah, in the 90s, when I, uh, uh, when I got married to my wife, I did the same. I also bought a pair of metal trings. At that time, each single ring produced 15 tons of waste. Yeah. And this waste, yes, it takes energy, you need a crusher, you need a lot of chemicals. Yeah. So it's also pollution. 15 tons for just one single marriage ring. Tomorrow, maybe, you will marry. Yeah. Right now, the situation is each marriage ring will produce 30 tons of waste. Yeah. And that will increase. So the thing is, we are not running out of resources here on our planet. However, the low-hanging fruits are harvested, and it's getting more and more expensive. That is, it takes more and more resources. And that is what our heart, the heart of economists, makes bleeding. Yeah, that is what we don't like. <laughs> OK, so here, economics of space mining. Mining is a very old business, as you may know. Yeah, and so now we know we are surrounded yeah, by, so, by so many assets yeah, we could also use. Yeah, so that is, we could send our excavators, like this here, this nice thing, made in Germany, of course, yeah, to, uh, to the space, well, and see what is there. Yeah. Don't we have resources there which maybe can be produced without any environmental disadvantage in, at lower costs than here? OK, so first of all, how much is around us? Well, even very close to us, there is so much. The key are the asteroids. Well, and there are, as we now know, around about 20 millions. 20 millions in our solar system. 15,000 of them are very close to the Earth. We call them near-Earth objects. The rest, OK, is between Mars and uh, Jupiter. Yeah? And here, yes, you, there's a picture that shows you the density of, this, uh, of these asteroids. NASA yeah, had also tried to estimate what is the value of the assets, of the commodities on these asteroids. Very many are of iron nickel, and you have a high amount of platinum. They try to estimate what is the value of all of them, and the result is pretty, impe is pretty uh, uh, impressive. 700,000 quadrillion. A quadrillion, yeah, it sounds like a fantastillion from uh, Dagobert Duck. Yeah, so <laughs> a quadrillion is 1,000 trillion. It is 10 years the GDP, yeah, and here you have 700,000 quadrillion. So that means $100 billion per person here. What are you waiting for? $100 billion per, per person. Or if you compare it yes, to our mining industry on our planet, you will find okay, that, even, <coughs> uh, that even a small asteroid it produce is worth $100 billion. This is the value, this is the value uh, of the total production of all mines together we have here. Yeah. Or a last measure, it would take 7 billion years mining on our Earth to have the value of the asteroids there. So really impressive. So there is a lot. And uh, even the grade there is really good. It's much better than we have on Earth. This is a small table showing you, you know, for some important metals, how much do we have here on Earth. First on the average in the Earth crust, yeah. then at the anomalies. Anomalies are the places where we have the mines where we have higher concentrations. Otherwise, we would not have the mines. Otherwise, it would be much more expensive. And how is it on an asteroid? And as you can see, yeah, there's a significant difference. 
And at the end, you can see that one kilogram of ore from an asteroid is much more valuable than one kilogram of ore from here. A kilogram of ore here, between one and 10 cent, one kilogram of ore from an asteroid, between one dollar and five dollar, so much more. Just keep that in mind, one dollar to five dollar per kilogram. So now let's see, is it worth trouble to return it to Earth? My idea, that is what I teach to my students, learning curve. Yeah, that is what we are doing in, uh, in the management master. Yeah, and yeah, what is here? Yeah, this is really frustrating. Yeah, so we have returned samples from outside our planet a few times back uh, to our Earth. And what you have on the vertical axis, these are not uh, dollars, but these are millions of dollars. Yeah, so round about we stand at one billion per kilogram. That doesn't sound like big bucks we can make, maybe big costs we can produce, yeah, but not large profits so far. However, another consideration. What is if we really focus upon that, if we use the latest technology? Maybe things are better. And what you have here are just some simple considerations. And everything in space mining, everything depends on energy. Yes. If we want to escape our gravity field, we need energy. We need what we call delta V, the change in the velocity to escape the gravity field of the Earth, to escape the, the gravity field of the Moon, wherever we are. Well, and the thing is, because of the rocket equation, this, uh, the energy need is not proportional yes, to the delta V, but it is explosively proportional, yeah, so that is disproportionate disproportionately, sorry, uh, proportional to that. So there is a doubling of the delta V, does not mean a doubling of the energy need, but you have the four, the fivefold of that. Well, and so here are just some calculations. I don't wanna go, yes, into the depth of that, but I wanna give you an idea. This bottle of water here is one kilogram. If you produce it here on Earth, well, it is, let's say, one euro. If we now transport this bottle of water with the latest technology to a low Earth orbit, LEO, LEO, low Earth orbit, these costs are 10,000. So this, this bottle of, of, of water in the Earth orbit is around about $10,000 plus the one to produce it here. And so this is the big thing. Whatever do you do, you do with the calculations here, perhaps it will never be profitable, at least not in that century, to return something to Earth. Perhaps we can forget about that. However, the big thing about space mining is it, we can create an infrastructure, an infrastructure which is valuable if we want to expand. Yeah, if we want to expand, so that is, if we maybe colonize Mars, if we want, yes, to also colonize other planets. And so this is something what will happen, and this is also something what must happen. Here I'm completely with Stephen Hawking. Yeah, it's not enough to stay here on our planet. We now know how many, so many planets are around. So many. More or less each sun we have planets. And the very first step is to create an infrastructure. An infrastructure outside our planet, so that is factories and so on. Yeah, and this is the basis, is to reduce the energy need. And this is actually yeah, what will happen uh, by our private investments. So returning to Earth is perhaps completely irrelevant for a long time into the future. Maybe you ask, okay, and what is the status quo? Yeah, is this just a dream of that economist here? Yeah, that, of that uh, Professor Lang? Yeah, to some extent it is, I, uh, I admit. However, it's not only a dream. We, all, we already have two firms, two private firms. It's not the government. Yeah. These are private firms, private investments, uh, which try, yes, to make the first steps into space mining. Yeah, you have the name here. Yeah, we have Planetary Resources. Well, that is a U.S. firm. The other firm, Deep Space Industries, also a U.S. firm. However, it's based in Luxembourg. So it is, it is in, uh, in Europe. And why? Because Luxembourg and the United States, they have now decided about new laws, which makes clear if you are active in the field of space mining, whatever you mine out there is yours. So there is, it is now a good legal framework, a good legal background about that. Well, so that is what you, 
what you have here, the firms are expanding. They are right now exploring which of the asteroids are the most attractive ones in the short run. And maybe the first step is they will just do something. They will dig for water. They will use the water to produce fuel. That is, at that time, in our time, hydrogen and oxygen. And that not bringing back to Earth, but using for our, for our uh, spacecrafts, which are around the Earth. So this is, this is the idea. Don't think so much about returning something to our planet. So this is, I guess, for the whole century, not very attractive. However, for an infrastructure, it is maybe very, very valuable. OK. To stop with that, this is my, 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 final, uh, my final idea. Of course, Luxembourg is in, the, is in the market. I don't know. This is this leg here, yeah? Uh, our, our nice neighbor uh, here in, in Europe. Of course, you, uh, the United States is active. And it would be great, yes, if I also raise your interest for that. This is really something with a vision. This is not something we do for us. Yes, thinking about exploring the space, thinking about colonizing other planets. It's a question of survival of all of us. This is for our children, this is for our grandchildren yeah, to, in, to, invest, uh, to invest there. And so I, here I have hoisted some KLU flags. Yeah, so there is not so much like, okay, marking our claim to get rich in the future. Yeah? Maybe, yes, of course, we believe in incentives. I'm an economist, that is true at the end. However, yeah, it's more than just that. It is just, okay, we do something for the future. Thank you very much, Professor Lang, for the talk, not the exam today. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, this has come to an end. That was the last presentation. Um, we, however, would like to invite the speakers today and thank them personally for what they have done, the research and the talks. And we would like to give them a token of appreciation, which is a certification. Um, so please come up stage. Thank you so much. <laughs> but this event would not have been possible without the help of the students that initiated this three years ago and today. So if the crew could come up and join us, and former crew as well, that'd be great. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for being here. Uh, we really appreciate your support, and it wouldn't be the same without your presence. And we hope we keep this tradition on. No. No? <laughs> Come on. All right, uh, I will add to that further. It wouldn't have been possible just because of us, but all the support that we've got from student services and the reception desk and professors, all the speakers, so it wouldn't have been really possible to put up a great show. And obviously, without you, it's completely impossible. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. So now you're all welcome to uh, join us outside to have a couple of drinks. Uh, there's beer now, if you want, and uh, some, some sandwiches. So thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the sun, everyone. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> <laughs>